During the summer of 385 BC, a boat set sail from Paris in the Aegean Sea towards the Ionic Bay, as the Greeks referred to the Adriatic Sea. The boat's destination, lying about 700 nautical miles away from the Aegean Paris, was the island of Hvar, which was at the time called Pitea or Paris or Pharis in Greek. It is said that a few hundred families settled there and formed a colony. The families were led by their eekist, a man appointed by the assembly of the native town to be responsible for navigation, relationships and arrangements with the native people, as well as for organizing the settlers into a political community in which all the institutions of the polis, the army included, would be created. It was also his duty to divide land equally amongst the settlers, who would then cultivate it within their territory referred to as Hora. In the middle of the Starigrad plain, the starting measurement point, Omphalos, was marked out to be visible to all. With the help of the groma, a simple instrument that enables the plotting of perpendicular lines, and the kalamos, a measuring rod, the plain was measured and divided into parcels of land plots, measuring 1 by 5 stadions, today approximately 180 by 900 meters or slightly more than 16 hectares. The paths that lay between the properties were measured separately and designated as polis property. Border stones with names of property owners were carved out. The first measurements of land and the distribution of property proved to the native people that the Greeks' intentions were not concordant with their expectations. Rather, they opposed their primary interests and agreements with the settlers. Consequently, the polis was attacked by the united forces of both coastal and island Illyrians one year later, in 384 BC. The Greeks would likely have been defeated and pushed back into the sea had it not been for the chance appearance of the Syracusian fleet led by the infamous tyrant Dionysius the Elder. The Illyrians lost 5,000 men in battle and 2,000 were taken into slavery. Victory enabled that the Greeks used the entire field of Starigrad, which was the largest fertile plain throughout the Adriatic islands. The process that changed the cultural image of the plain evolved from this point onwards. Soon the settlers began to build tool sheds and shelters on their land, whereas the more affluent also built houses for slaves and land supervisors, as well as facilities for the processing and storage of food. A variety of approximately 60 facilities belonging to certain lands were found on the plain. However, the luxurious buildings that were equipped for land supervisors date to the Roman era. The Stadigrad plain, despite all the changes it endured during the second half of the 20th century, is today one of the best preserved ancient Greek landscapes in the Mediterranean. Based on strict geometric form, the Stadigrad plain presents a successful solution that survived two and a half thousand years during which elements were added to prevent erosion, facilitate work on the land and then access to it. Considering its unique value as a historic document and its immense aesthetic potential, in 2008 the Stadigrad plain was ranked and listed among the World Cultural Heritage Monuments.